It's estimated that building the world's tallest skyscraper cost over one and a half billion dollars. And for good reason, we're talking about the Burj Khalifa, a gigantic structure with over 160 floors, so luxurious that even an 80 square meter apartment can exceed $1,000 per day. But have you ever wondered how such a skyscraper is built? How is it possible that such a colossal building can withstand earthquakes, extreme winds, and the weight of thousands of tons without collapsing? Well, today we're traveling to Dubai to discover how this 828-meter structure, accessible to the planet's wealthiest, was built from scratch. So, get ready to discover how the most impressive skyscraper in history was constructed. Let's begin. Step number one, design creation. Before a single stone was moved, an impossible question had to be answered. How do you design a building over 800 meters tall without it collapsing under its own weight? The answer wasn't immediate. With the work of over a thousand engineers and architects, the design development took more than six years of planning, testing, and simulations. Finally, it was architect Adrian Smith who had an idea as brilliant as it was risky to draw inspiration from the geometry of a desert flower to create a Y-shaped structure that broke all the rules. Each of the building's three arms would provide stability, distribute loads, and deflect wind force as it ascended. Everything was calculated to the millimeter. The central core is built with ultra-resistant reinforced concrete, and each exterior panel was designed to withstand extreme pressures and temperatures of over 50 degrees. Nothing was left to chance. Every component was created with a single purpose, to erect the tallest skyscraper in history on sandy, unstable terrain plagued by sandstorms and extreme heat. With the design approved, it was time to bring this idea to life on the burning desert of Dubai and begin massive construction. Step number two, excavation and ultra-deep foundations. Under scorching heat and unstable terrain, hundreds of workers began a titanic task excavating more than 50 meters deep to build the base of the Burj Khalifa. But this wasn't done haphazardly. Before starting, several geotechnical experts conducted exhaustive soil analyses to ensure that the subsoil could support the colossal loads of the structure. A single mistake here would not only cost millions of dollars, but could also endanger hundreds of lives. With the approval of the technicians, workers, supported by enormous cranes, excavators, and concrete trucks, began to open a gigantic crater, where 192 steel and concrete piles almost 2 meters in diameter were installed, designed to anchor into the most resistant layers of the subsoil. On this base, more than 45,000 cubic meters of reinforced concrete were poured, creating a foundation slab so dense and robust that, even after more than a decade, it holds the world's tallest skyscraper without moving a single centimeter. With the foundations well anchored and ready, the ground was prepared for the most challenging part, beginning to erect an 800-meter-plus structure upon them. Step number three, the skyscraper's core. With the foundations ready, it was time to erect the heart of the skyscraper, a central reinforced concrete core that would serve as the backbone of the entire structure. This core not only supports the weight of the floors, but also acts as a shield against the extreme winds that batter high altitudes. Because, believe it or not, at 800 meters above the ground, the wind can push with enough force to deform steel. To build it, a special method called slip forming was used, which allowed the core to be lifted without stopping for a single minute. Day and night, workers poured fresh concrete into gigantic molds that slowly ascended while the material hardened below. In less than two months, they managed to erect the first 20 floors of the central core, and in less than two years, they had already built all 170 floors of this solid, compact, and steel-reinforced block, designed to withstand all kinds of extreme conditions. In fact, the core wasn't fully built before the rest of the structure. As it rose, enormous cranes and workers added floors and lateral structures around it, coordinating everything perfectly. With this backbone in place, construction could begin on the floors one by one, assembling them around the central core. But erecting over 160 floors at such a height isn't like building just any building. At every level, wind, weight, and the sheer height complicate everything, requiring the precision of the most expert hands and the most advanced technology. Step number four, floors, structure, and exterior cladding. While the central core continued to rise, hundreds of workers and specialized machinery began assembling the levels that would form the habitable floors of the skyscraper. Each floor was built around the core like an enveloping layer, connected by ultra-resistant steel beams and prefabricated concrete slabs. 
The process was meticulously precise. Enormous cranes placed the pieces one by one at over 500 meters high, while entire teams of workers secured the joints with high-precision welding and fasteners. At this point, any miscalculation could cause an entire section to be out of level, and that was unacceptable. As the levels ascended, so did the exterior cladding. Over 26,000 reflective glass and aluminum panels that were designed to withstand extreme temperatures, sandstorms, and impacts from free-falling objects. Each panel had a special thickness of over 25 millimeters and an exact angle to reflect the sun and reduce the building's internal heating, literally like a giant thermal armor. Though it sounds incredible, many of these panels were installed with the help of robots that climbed special rails, as doing it by hand would be too risky. This combination of human engineering and automation allowed for impressive progress, raising an entire floor every three days. And while the structure already soared above the clouds, something crucial was still missing. Equipping the skyscraper with intelligent systems capable of keeping it habitable, efficient, and safe. Step number five, internal systems and invisible engineering. Although from the outside, the Burj Khalifa already seemed finished, the most complex part was still missing inside. Installing the systems that would allow a building over 800 meters tall to function like a vertical city. Can you imagine bringing water to 160 floors, cooling thousands of square meters under the desert sun, or moving thousands of people a day without the elevators collapsing? This is where what many call invisible engineering comes into play. First, a gigantic HVAC system was designed with industrial chillers capable of pumping cool air through kilometers of hidden ducts. For water, zoned hydraulic networks were created, sending supply in stages to prevent pressure from bursting pipes on the lower levels. But the most impressive are the elevators, capable of reaching speeds of over 10 meters per second and transporting up to 14 people per cabin in each of the more than 50 elevators that traverse the tower. Furthermore, they are programmed with automatic intelligence to avoid crowds, coordinate routes, and optimize trips according to the time of day, as if it were a perfectly functioning vertical metro system on every floor. Independent electrical systems, security sensors, fire detection networks, and climate control units per floor were also installed. Literally, everything was thought of so that the building behaves like an intelligent organism. And while all these systems were being installed inside at the very top of the Burj Khalifa, preparations were already underway for the final challenge, raising the gigantic spire that would officially make it the tallest building on the planet. Step number six, the pinnacle and the final spire. Just when it seemed nothing could surpass what had been built, the project's most extreme moment arrived, crowning the Burj Khalifa with its final spire, a key piece to break all height records. This isn't just a simple ornament. This enormous metallic spire measures over 200 meters and represents almost a quarter of the building's total height. Without it, the Burj Khalifa wouldn't be the tallest skyscraper on the planet. Its installation was a technical challenge on another level. The spire wasn't assembled from the exterior. Instead, it was built in sections within the building's core itself. Once ready, a special crane placed on the top of the building lifted it and secured it in place, all at over 800 meters high, with absolutely no margin for error. A single failure could mean a tragedy costing hundreds of millions of dollars. Finally, after weeks of millimeter-perfect maneuvers, they succeeded. The spire was perfectly installed, equipped with antennas, lightning rods, and communication systems, officially solidifying the Burj Khalifa as the tallest building ever constructed by humans. And now with the floors completed, the interiors underway, and the pinnacle crowned, only one final stage remained to convert this colossal work into a functional and habitable space. Step number seven, interiors, opening, and operation. With the tower standing tall, the last challenge was to transform it into a habitable, functional, and extremely luxurious place. Over 1,500 workers were responsible for the interiors, technicians, installers, and designers who filled each floor with cutting-edge technology, climate control systems, smart networks, and top-tier security. But the most striking aspect was the finishes. Over $100 million invested in Italian marble, fine woods, handmade carpets, and customized lighting. Every corner was designed to reflect the level of luxury demanded by one of the most exclusive buildings on the planet. The Burj Khalifa isn't just apartments. It also houses five-star hotels, corporate offices, luxury restaurants, and tourist observation decks, making it a true vertical city. Before its inauguration, everything was tested to the millimeter, and when everything was approved, finally. In 2010, 
The Burj Khalifa was inaugurated as the tallest skyscraper on the planet. However, although never officially confirmed, it's estimated that at least a dozen workers died during its construction, a reality that is part of the price of erecting the world's most exclusive building. To conclude, tell us, did you imagine this entire process? Would you pay over $1,000 to spend a single night there? Leave your answer in the comments. And if you like this video, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the bell to not miss the next factory tour.